all right so if you are still with me up to this point congratulations you are almost there so now we have looked at designing a data collection form we've looked at getting started with cobo toolbox and uh, we have actually previewed we haven't looked at deploying your form yet so now here we are going to look at um, some settings that are related to data collection or to your questions okay what settings can you put so that you have full control on your data collection okay so let me go to the cobo toolbox okay so the two questions that i want to look at um skip logic and validation criteria so for example i'll, I'll start first with um uh, validation criteria so on this question okay age that i have here which in research we call it a variable you see here it says settings then this one says delete okay if i want to delete this question this one is a duplicate option and this one is a add question to library so I, by clicking here i can add the question to the library but now what i want us to look at is the settings so i'll click on settings and then this window will open so you can see here you have skip logic and then you have validation criteria okay so i'll start first with the validation criteria so you are going to click on um uh validation criteria but first just before i come there data column name is age okay guidance hint in case you want to put a guidance hint so you can say in months okay or in years so you can put there and then if you want to make this response mandatory you can just click um mandatory response so meaning that this question will be mandatory for someone to 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 respond to so you've seen this is why it gives you some control over the data that you're collecting now i want us to come to validation criteria so what is validation criteria it is also called constraint okay constraint so here you limit the type of that or the data that someone can give you so let me say add a condition so let's say this is age all right this is age that i'm collecting and in my uh, in my if you are doing a research if i don't want to collect data from those that are above or below a certain age that's according to my selection criteria okay so maybe i can say this question response has to be so you can see here it says greater than so you can say equal to not equal to greater than less than greater than or whatever so let me let me let me say it doesn't have to be greater than or this question response has to be let's say i'm collecting data from only those that are above 18 so i'm going to say this question has to be above 18 okay and then here i can put an error message so i'll say age must must be above above 18 okay and below maybe 35 okay so this is the error message that the the user is going to be greeted with in case they put a wrong age then i can put another condition so so here maybe i can say less than okay i can say less than okay less than less than and then i'll put 50 or oh, 30 maybe let me say 36 six okay all right so now after putting these conditions i can close by simply coming this side i'll close this all right now let's see what happens okay you can see age has now assumed a star you can see there's a star there so let's preview the form we see exactly how that impact the data entry or the data collection okay so here we are so here you can see age and then there's more details when i click on more details it tells it tells me in man so that's a hint okay that's a hint there so if i put let's say remember with the constraint is between um 18 and 36 so if i put 12 and they say okay you've seen it says age must be above 18 and below 35 so if i put something like maybe 7 or oh, 19 19 okay you see it will accept but if i say 37 you see it denies age must be above 18 and below so that's what um validation criteria works like okay now let's look at uh, what is called the skip logic okay skip logic so there are certain questions that you want someone to skip okay 
So this can include like, um, let me say, uh, what can I put here where it will ask someone. So let's say, do you have children? The first question says, do you have children? Okay. The first question can say, do you have children? And then uh, the response can either be yes or no. So it can be either yes or no. Okay. And then from here, the follow-up question can be, if you have children, how many? Okay, so it can be how many children do you have? Okay, do you have? Do you have? So now, uh, so here they have to put a number. Now look, I don't want this second, the, the, the last question, how many children do you have, to appear to those people who are going to select no on do you have children? Because, because um, that will not be applicable to them, okay? I don't want that to be applicable to them. So what will I do? I'll come to settings, okay? I'll come to settings, then I'll click on skip logic, and then I'll say add condition, and then select a question from list. So, so I'll say, do you have children? And then response here, I'll say yes, okay? I'll say yes, all right? I'll say yes. So what will happen? What will happen now? So let us go to preview form. We see what will happen. Okay, let's preview. Okay. You've seen that question which says how many children isn't appearing here. It's not appearing. So when I say no, it's not going to appear. But immediately I say yes, you've seen it appear. So that is skip logic. So it gives you control on your uh, data collection. Isn't this amazing? So we've learned in this lesson, we've learned three things. We've looked at the settings, okay? We've looked at the settings, how to make a question compulsory. We've looked at validation criteria, okay? Also called the constraint. We've also looked at skip logic. So where certain questions can be skipped to those people who uh, it's not relevant to, okay? So I hope you've enjoyed the session. In the next session, we are going to look at how you can customize. Maybe I can just discuss that because it doesn't take much time. So that in the other part, we just look at how we can deploy the form. So on the layout and settings, that's where you are going to click. Once you click on the layout, you are going to come here on there on the okay, form style. So form style, you have um, grid theme, grid theme with headings in all caps, multiple pages, and so on. So if I say grid theme, and then say save okay and then when i open this you're going to see that the form is going to change the way it's going to appear okay the form is going to change you've seen now it looks different because now i have selected the i've selected the grid option part of it so you can try out all these other types okay there are multiple pages and so on you can try them out here metadata you can choose to collect this metadata start date end date today device id phone number these are metadata you can if you select them they are going to be um collected as well even enable audio recording in the background so if you want to record audio in the background and so on you can put these so i usually just ignore them so so at this point we've covered the question settings that are needed and then maybe this option this option which says expand if you click on expand if i if i do that uh, you will see that the questions will be um they have expand they have uh, they have collapsed if i say expand you see they open up it doesn't give me much space to work on but when i say close and the question uh, it will give me enough space to work on. So in the next lesson, I'm going to look at how you can group questions, how to group questions, and then we'll look at now how to deploy form and how to export and we'll be done. So thank you for being with me. See you in the next lesson.